Hello folks, let's cut to the chase. The new world boss is located underwater in the middle of Fontaine, and it will unlock after you beat the Archon quest. But you can also use this new feature in the update that lets you teleport straight to the world boss and unlock it without finishing the Archon quest, which is very helpful for new players. I like this fight for two reasons. The All Devouring Narwhal does not have any team requirements. Having the Numa and Usia attacks can save a little time, but you do not need them at all to beat the whale. And the second reason is the camera. We can zoom out a lot more for most of the fight, letting you enjoy the gorgeous water that ripples when you move and the beautiful scenery encompassing us. So where was I before talking about this marvelous stage? Oh, right. This fight has two phases, the outside phase and the inside phase and a gimmick that swaps between the two. I'll start with the outside first. This is where you fight the giant whale itself. The boss swims slowly all over the map, and its attacks are highly telegraphed. It only uses body slams and orbital beams, which all have indicators on the ground to warn you the attack is coming. The second phase is inside the narwhal, where you fight an abyss warrior. He is much more aggressive and attacks way faster, but can be bursted down fairly quick. He also charges an attack that can be instantly interrupted by Numa or Usia, but the attack itself is short and easy to dodge, so there's no need to force a team together that has these Fontaine properties. And here are the three types of mobs he can summon if you do not interrupt him. To get from the outside to inside, you need to fill the well status gauge. It's the small circle under the health bar. Once this gauge gets to about 75%, it will summon an orb in the middle. Break the orb by attacking it with anything. This includes all your elemental hits and your physical normal attacks. The Numa or Usia property will instantly break the orb, but it's already pretty fragile to start with. After breaking, the orb will eat you like Moby Dick and send you inside. And when you deplete the toughness gauge on the inside, you get spit back out where you have 25 seconds to attack a training dummy. Yep, I think this is the longest stun state we have seen yet. A full 25 seconds to show your moves. moves. Alright, time for the attack patterns. Like I mentioned, there's only body slams and laser beams on the outside. The body slams are all very slow and telegraphed. If you see the pretty floor start to glow, then move out of it. You can also keep an eye on the whale and time your dashes or bursts to iframe through the slams. The timing becomes pretty easy after you get used to it. The only slam that is hard to iframe is the one that comes from underneath. The floor will crack like ice and the boss jumps up on the fifth crack. I recommend just running out of the circle for this one since the timing can be a little tight. And for the beams, there are two versions. The quicker, smaller beams happen after this shallow dive, where the boss floats along the surface. You can even see the pulsating orb on its back that shoots the beams. Just look at your feet and keep moving to avoid it. The second version has bigger beams that happens after the well emerges from this deep dive you see here. It will go down, then back up. If you listen closely, you can hear the majestic light sound during the startup of both of the beam attacks. When you hear this or see smaller circles under your feet, get ready to move away. Now for the inside. The mini boss might seem intimidating at first with its constant attacks, but there's one trick to avoid all these slashes. Just dash behind him. Yep, that's it. The attacks have a second delayed hit, so if you stay where you were, the second hit will get you. But if you dodge behind, you avoid both the main and secondary slashes. It's also easier to see when you aren't surrounded by space crackling purple stuff. There's also random lightning strikes mixed with all these melee swings. Look at your feet and keep avoiding the purple circles. Now that we got defense covered, it's time for the offense. Your goal is to deplete the white toughness bar, not the actual health bar. The white gauge slowly, very slowly goes down over time, but it also depletes when taking elemental hits. Physical attacks do not lower the gauge, but everything else does. 
Once the bar is gone, the inside phase is done and you get spit back out. While fighting, the boss can disappear to charge an attack, which will cause several summon creatures to attack you. These attacks are easy to dodge, and we cannot hit the summons, and the mini boss is gone anyway, so we just run around until he comes back. If you do want to break the orb, then that's where the Numa and Usia character help. One attack from either of these properties will instantly break the orb. Here's how much toughness it takes from one of those attacks. And that about does it for all the abilities in both phases. You can also get an achievement for getting eaten twice. To do that, just keep the well above 50% HP after leaving the belly and run around until it swallows you again. If the boss's health is too low, it will not swallow you, so make sure to keep it above 50% and stop attacking to get this chivo. Alrighty, time for the quick kill footage. I say quick, but it still takes some time since there's a bunch of transitions and stuff in this fight. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope this guide was helpful, and as always, have fun out there traveler! Solidify! Yeah.